Hello everyone, this is another um, tips and tricks video for um, some cool processes you can do in ArcGIS Desktop or ArcGIS Online. Uh, what you're looking at right here is uh, ArcGIS Online, uh, our platform that we use to wirelessly collect data as well as to make web-based maps uh, that we can share with clients and internally. Uh, one of the cooler features is through the Collector app is when you're out there in the field, you can actually uh, access your data remotely and you know take pictures or movies or other attachments and have it upload uh, geographically to the thing of which you took a picture of. Uh, this is really helpful when we're actually doing web-based maps. Uh, you know, in this instance, this is a parcel map in Memphis. They were able to go out and take a look or take actual pictures, and so it can be embedded in like a pop-up window so that your user could really easily take a look at the photograph of what you're looking at. Um, one thing that's a bit challenging, though, or a bit more challenging than it should be, is you know you don't always just want these photographs online. Sometimes you want them for other purposes locally on your own machine. And there's unfortunately no easy way to just batch extract all of the photos. So that's the purpose of this video is to provide um, you know a workaround that doesn't have too many steps, so that you can get all of the photographs that you took uh, that you've taken onto your local machine and have them named in such a way you know, that it's a little bit nicer than that. Maybe the name says something like, hey, 667 Union Photo. So whenever you're looking at your uh, data, the first step here is um, whatever feature layer contains the attachments. In this instance, it's the parcel data set. Click on the three dots next to it and look at the item details. Right? You can also just do this in your content if that's easier. I actually didn't need to do that because I already had it open. Something will come up looking like this that tells you everything you need to know about the feature uh, service, feature service, um, including the different layers that are there. Uh, this used to be a lot more complicated. This would have had to been a 20-minute video, uh, but fortunately, ArcGIS Online or ESRI updated it to make it a little bit easier to at least do the first step. And that first step is let's take that parcel data set that we were looking at here, and we need to export it. Right. So we're basically saying here, get my things local. All right, there's lots of ways you can get your data locally, but for this instance, we want it to be a file geodatabase. Um, a file geodatabase, in this instance, that's going to have two things. It's essentially going to have the actual features, right? in this instance, the parcels, and then a table of sorts that contains the attachments and has language so that we can know which attachment goes to which parcel. So if you hit export, you'll get a little screen like this. Give it a name. Give it some tags, a summary, save it somewhere on ArcGIS Online. Once that's finished, it will take a bit, that's why I'm not doing it. You'll see a page like this pop up, but you can also access this in my content. And this is really, it's almost like a download package that's ready for you to download. And when you're ready, simply hit download, and it'll go to wherever you store your downloads, and it'll look something like this, a geodatabase. So that's step one. We've taken everything from online and we've got it into a file geodatabase. However, that is still a mechanism that only we who have ArcGIS on, uh, desktop can access. What we're trying to get here, the ultimate goal, is a folder that has all of these folders that we can use for whatever we'd like. So in order to do that, we actually have to come into desktop. And when we come into desktop, we're going to want to navigate and find the thing that we just downloaded. Okay. There's the uh, geodatabase. And you notice there's a couple items in it. Here it has a, just kind of like a table that records what you downloaded. Uh, but more importantly, it's got these two things. The actual parcel data that we had previously, right, with the same fields as previous, with one addition, the global ID field that we'll return to in a second, and something that says attach, right, which is just a pretty cool and nifty um, kind of like a hybrid. It's a table, but it also contains the pictures, right? They're stored in here almost behind the scenes. And, you know, the way we get to them is you actually would click on the parcel and, you know, a little thing pops up with an attachment and you can take a look at it. These two are related to each other with something that's called a relationship class right here, which we're not going to go into right now. All you really need to know here is that these 152 attachments, these are the photographs in this instance, and they relate back to a given parcel right here, relationship global ID. 
It's essentially them saying, this is the global ID of the parcel that I'm connected to. And that's important because if we just ran like a script to batch uh, download these into a folder and we didn't you know, play around with the fact that there's that cool little relationship, the relationship ID, we would get 152 photos named like this. And that's, you know, nice that we have the photos, but not nice because that's really a confusing name. We want something a little bit simpler, such as, oh, look at that, the address, or the parcel ID, or some other unique name so it's very easy to identify. All right? way do we do this is essentially through a, uh, a Python script that I have written and stored on the collaborative GIS database. Um, I'll real quick, I'll open it up for you, just those who want to see it. Um, you know, this is not the video to walk through uh, it in depth. I've tried to include some annotations so you could see what's happening with each part of the script. Um, but really, you know, for uh, purposes of the script, all it's doing is it's scrolling through each of these 152 pictures using the global ID to take the appropriate name of the parcel, bring it back, and then save it based on that name. So essentially the way that we do this is we're going to try to save everything into a new folder that I'm called testing. Right? You can see right now testing has nothing in it. Um, and the way that you run the script, if you ran into the collaborative GIS database, uh, you know, I've tried to set, or I'm going to try to set as many of these up. Um, scripts in ArcGIS always have two parts. You won't be able to ever see the base scripts in, in ArcGIS, uh, um, sorry, in um, our collect, what is this called? Our catalog. Uh, but if you looked on Windows Explorer or Mac, you'd be able to actually see the script. That's like the raw language. And this is essentially a platform or a parser through which that language is, is um, parsed so that it can run in ArcGIS. Right, so this is a totally other video. You can find them on my YouTube channel for how to take a script that you've written yourself and make it work in ArcGIS. The ones that you see in here should be pre-configured uh, uh, you know, pre to work. So if you open it up, it's going to want four things from you. Uh, first thing it's going to want is an attachment table, right? That's essentially this. It's the attachments that we just looked at. Hey, I want to know, um, you know, in that file geo database that you downloaded, what's the table that is storing the attachments? And so you navigate to wherever it is and you tell it you're the attachment table. Second one is the feature table. This is essentially, right, if the attachments are where the pictures are, the features are the actual parcels or the points or whatever you were collecting. That's what we're going to search so that we can find the appropriate file name. Fields for naming, right, that's the final most important thing. You'll see it actually took on all of the fields that are stored here because it's derived from it. It's simply saying, hey, if I look through each of those files, what name do you want me to pull out to use, right? And you can pick whatever you want in this instance. Let's pull parcel address because that seems like a, a very logical thing to name our, uh, our JPEGs after. And then finally, where's the folder that I want to save things? Um, you know, this is that testing folder that I just created. You would make whatever folder you want. All right, hit OK. It's going to say it's doing its thing, yada, yada, yada. It's going to say complete. And if you open up testing, you'll now see that there is uh, all of the photographs uh, with the appropriate name uh, that you had derived in front of them. So that's essentially the mechanism by which you get from ArcGIS Online and batch download all of your attacks.